In today's video, we're going to be talking about more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, in particular an interview that came from Saudi Gamer and was translated on X by Dengo. For those that just want to check out the interview, there'll be links down below in the description. For those that want to stick with the video and discuss these answers and what it means for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, stick around and get involved in the comment section below because this video is for you. So with that all being said, what is up guys jen here hope you're all doing well welcome back to the channel i've got you covered with timestamps so if you want to skip to a certain question and discussion point feel free to do so whatever floats your boat all i ask is for you to support the channel and hit the thumbs up button and without further ado let's get straight into the interview and since remake and rebirth tells one continuous story how do you balance rebirth offering improvements and changes to remake while still having a cohesive feel the core concept of being nostalgic but new, which we defined for Final Fantasy VII Remake, is at the heart of all three parts of the trilogy. We are faithfully following the same idea of the reimagining and the elements depicted in the original Final Fantasy VII as modern entertainment in order to create a, that feeling of nostalgia, but at the same time remain a new and fresh experience so players can rest assured that there is a strong consistency over the series. On top of that, with the introduction of the expansive world map in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we see the story take the player out onto a bigger stage, and so the exploration of the elements of gameplay has been greatly expanded and enhanced. This means that the player now has much more freedom than with the previous episode, letting them decide what order they want to tackle the game's different elements in both the main story and the plethora of varied side content. Okay, so the end of this answer is the most interesting, where it says that we can decide the order that we want to tackle the game's different elements in both the main story and the plethora of various side content. So maybe there's certain aspects of the story that we can tackle in a bit of a different order. So an example that may come to mind might to do with the gold saucer. We know that Barrett kind of goes on a tangent and he ends up chucking us in jail at the coral prison. Maybe the ways we can do this is a little bit different. Maybe we don't don't need to find Barrett straight away. Maybe we can do something else on the side that relates to the main story and then we can continue on with the story. I don't know how it works, but I'm sure there's going to be certain story beats that will definitely kind of give us the choice to kind of, we'll leave Gongaga for now and we'll go over to Cosmo Canyon, but we do need to continue to Nibelheim. We need to go to Gongaga. I don't know, something along those lines is what I'm getting, but I think we can all expect when it comes to SideCon, we can tackle that as and when, and that's fantastic fantastic and it is really nice to see that they are giving us the freedom final fantasy 7 remake was kind of linear in the fact that we kind of went around midgar it wasn't midgar at our fingertips but the world of gaia is at our fingertips for final fantasy 7 rebirth and i'm pretty excited for that Will the game still be broken down into chapters with certain areas specific to those chapters or will it be an open world the chapter structure and the overall extent of the expansive world are not related. The game is split into chapters based on progress through the main story, and more and more areas of the Final Fantasy VII world will gradually open up as the chapters progress. However, by the end of the game, all the continents, towns, and dungeons, and oceans you'll visit will be explorable across one seamlessly joined world map. I think we expected this, we're still going to have a chapter based system, but those chapters doesn't gate us to a certain area unless there's a point, for example, the Coral Prison, where we're going to have to complete that section before we kind of get the choice to go back or go forward when it comes in terms of story and locations. The thing that excites me the most here is just the kind of, however, by the end of the game, all continents, towns, dungeons and oceans will be explorable in a seamlessly joined world map i'm so interested to see how this is i know that we're not going to probably visit wutai there is a possibility that we might not visit like the southern eastern continent where kind of medial is and benora and all of that so it's really interested to see how this end game looks in rebirth what were the main lessons you learned from making remake and how did they influence rebirth 
When we released Final Fantasy VII Remake and observed the fan reaction to it, we saw that players were extremely positive about having enjoyed the story, but there were also definitely an impression that just following along with the story reduced the sense of player's agency and could make it feel like you were being dragged along by the events. This time around, we were very aware of providing that freedom of choice, which comes from letting the player choose what order to tackle things in and have included a wider variety of side elements and story content outside the main narrative. So much so that you can ignore the main story completely and just keep playing through the side content should you wish. In this way, there is still a solid dramatic story, but the overall gameplay experience we provide is completely different to the one in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Again, they are kind of focusing and honing in on the fact that we have the freedom to do what we want, and we've seen that. We can go off and find Chocobo chicks to find Chocobo stops. We can go off the beaten path and explore an island that we can swim to to get a little a bit of treasure we can go off and find more world intel and i think the freedom might get overwhelming but there may be a way that they do it that really kind of just eases us in for me personally i'm just really interested to dive in the world see what kind of lore they add to the continents as we travel through and just have a great time with final fantasy 7 rebirth yuffie and vincent are now mandatory instead of optional and secret why the change Indeed, in the original Final Fantasy VII, there were optional characters who did not have to join the party depending on how the story progressed. But for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we decided to properly depict the relationships between all the characters and how they interact. So now they always appear and play a stronger part on the ongoing scenarios. There are many situations which look at the bonds of forming between the different characters, so I think fans will be happy to see more of them. I mean, this is just excellent news. I recently played Final Fantasy VII Original to get the Platinum Trophy. And yeah, Yuffie and Vincent feel left out. They have some set dialogue for certain pieces of the game. For example, when you go against Hojo in Midgar and you finish that fight, Vincent has some unique dialogue that kind of ties into his story. But outside that, Yuffie and Vincent just have their kind of side content that's tied to them. Yuffie with Wu Tai and Vincent with like Lucrezia and the waterfall cavern but apart from that they are just kind of chimed in they're not even in the ending movie of final fantasy 7 they try to fix this in dirge cerberus with them kind of leading the charge down in midgar but it really didn't make sense so i'm hoping that this really fixes them we've already seen how we meet yuffie and we got a glimpse on how vincent is going to become part of the party but i'm really interested to see how they form the relationships between yuffie vincent barrett red 13 sid all of the characters together and their one-on-one -on -one interactions and here's the final question which i think a lot of people are probably quite excited for and rightly so remake had different outfits for tifa Aerith, and cloud by any chance, will we be able to acquire similar outfits in Rebirth and switch between them? There are playable scenes in the main story where you can wear different costumes than the original. In addition, there are also specific areas of the game where it is possible to change into any of the costumes you've collected. However, we have made sure that the immersion is not broken for players experiencing this game for the first time from costumes not matching up where the characters are in the story. Now, I, I will admit this kind of gets me excited. I'm a sucker for attires and collectibles in that respect. It's, we kind of got an inkling that we're going to see something like this with Cloud being on the Segway in the trailer and also the fact that the menu displays 3D models. Now, where would this area be that we can change whenever we want? I'm just going to go off the bat and say Costa del Sol. I could be wrong. I think maybe a good close second, if not the location where we can change our costumes, is going to be the gold saucer without a shadow of a doubt. Now, when it comes to costumes that we're going to collect, well, I think we're definitely going to see Cloud and the team in their beach outfits from Costa del Sol. We're more than likely going to see Barrett in a sailor's costume. We already see cloud in a soldier uniform so that would be a nice little throwback to crisis core running around in a standard shinra soldiers outfit and then i think if we're going to be going to a northern continent where it's a little bit colder and we're getting a glimpse of the snowy areas i think the team may have attires that are suited to that so have everyone in very snug clothes keeping them warm and red 13 well if we see him in a shinra soldier outfit that is a big tick on being on part with the 
the original Final Fantasy 7. What are some interesting outfits you would like to see and how do you think we're going to unlock them? I do think the gold saucer is going to be the main source of these outfits and where we can display them. I did have the idea that we can purchase the house in Costa del Sol for a little bit cheaper, maybe a little bit more, something that we can gain at the end game. And this is where we can display all the play art figures and maybe have some mannequins to display these outfits and get changed whenever we want to tackle the end game. So there we have it, a nice brief interview, but with some really kind of clear points on the fact that we have the freedom in this game and that is what's most exciting i don't think we've even scratched the surface with the footage that we've seen going into the open world there are so many things to find on the world map summon crystals live streams we even have proto relics we know that gilgamesh is going to be in the game the gold sources there we have vehicles we have segways it's crazy and that's just a smidgen of what we're going to see so i'm really excited to see what is next when it comes to previewing more of Final Fantasy Rebirth. What is it you would like to see in the next couple of trailers when it comes to kind of side content? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of that content. Get involved in the comments. And until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.